Oh. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back. I thought I would squeeze one more video in before Christmas. Uh, some extra records have just dro dropped in from above. You know how it is. You see something or identify something and think, right, I need that. It's good. Um, yeah, mixed bag today, really. A bit mixed bag. A little bit disappointed. I discovered the Oscar Peterson. We must get, we get requests. Um, and what I thought I'd ordered from beloved HMV as being the acoustic sounds version of this wonderful recording was actually the lesser uh, record um, version of it, but was slightly more expensive than what it should have cost. So a little bit down about that because that is a fantastic recording and I've only just discovered it. Anyway, let's just kick into a few records that I'd like to show you. And uh, this first one, which is intriguing. <laughs> um, tortoise, uh, TNT, and um, a couple of mates said, "Oh, have a listen to that, Marky Mark. See what you think." And I, I really liked it. Very trippy, very, very easygoing. Let me show you the, the double LP. I had a few drinks when I ordered it and realised that actually, oh, there's the, if you want to, um, there's the link there. If you want to access the the digital, uh, there it is. First come, first served. You're very welcome to it. Um, very nice. Starts off with a wonderful drum solo. And then this kind of guitar riff plays over and over and over again. It's a very dreamy, psychedelic kind of, and I really like it. <laughs> I really like it. The, the other thing I really like, there's two things really that, that stand out for me is uh, this front cover. <laughs> you can see that. I mean, as a group, as a music group, can you imagine going to a record producer, um, or going to a label, having a conversation about what, what graphics to put on your cover, and then you come up with that. <laughs> Um, so for me, that was just like really kind of very brave. And as I understand it, it took them a couple of years to to produce the record. Mid 90s, I think it's 95, 96. Uh, no, yeah, no, 96, uh, culminating in 1997. And it was released in 1998. It's a great listen, great listen. You can, very easy to get, still in print, very nice, nicely uh, recorded, mastered. It's not, it's not outstanding, but it's a really nice listen. And the other, the thing that I like about this, it reminds me, bear with me on this one. It, it reminds me of another um, trippy kind of easy listening, is it ambient? It's electronic, but it reminds me of this. I've shown this before many, many videos ago. Stereo Labs, Dots and Loops. Now this came out last year. I think I showed it as part of another video. And it's very similar to that. It's got that nice dreamy trip hop kind of nice feeling about it. And this is a triple LP, it's the two Two LPs that are the album, I believe, and the third is a kind of mix bonus outtakes and remixes. And this is a really great, lovely listen. And there's a, what I like about this particular album, this reissue, is that I'm not going to get it out, but they've got like a poster, fold out poster, and it tells you about how bad the tapes were and how they um, remastered them for this to make this reissue. It's great. I mean, it's a bit, it's a little bit heavy in the bass, in the mids, I think, in my opinion, but it's a gorgeous listen. And so 
uh, TNT from Tortoise, or Tortoise from TNT. Um, yeah, really, really recommend this. But the other thing I meant to say about this other one, I'll go back to the first, Tortoise. Um, uh, I, um, well, I read who was on this, and I haven't brought up their albums, actually. Uh, it's got Jeff Parker, who's a, a well-known guitar jazz artist. Jeff Parker, did a, he's, a, he's a great guitarist. Did a couple of albums I picked up last year, the year before. Um, Sweet for Max Brown. So he did, dedicated an album to his mum. And then he brought out, this is with um, the New Breeds. I wish I'd brought it up, actually. I was going to pick them up and show you. Um, but Jeff Parker, yeah. So when I when I saw that Jeff Parker was part of this collaboration, I thought, great, you know. And you can tell that that guitar riff at the beginning of the first track does sound very much like the sort of thing Jeff Parker would do. He likes to drop in these kind of reminiscent psychedelic almost guitar riffs. But yeah, Jeff Park, Jeff Parker and the New Breeds, great album. There's a couple, of, yeah, a couple of great albums. So anyway. Pop that back in there. Um, recommendation coming up. <laughs> um, the BBC at the moment are doing the, I think it's London Jazz Festival, putting out music and interviews on the BBC, BBC Sounds podcast app, which is very, work. it's worth a, a visit and having a, a little look and just... Um, taking in some modern stuff. Not that I'm a huge modern fan of jazz, I'll be honest. Um, but what I did uh, pick up and listen several times, <laughs> they've got some, I've got really nice, um, they've picked up some lost interviews with some big hitters from the jazz world. And it was a fantastic interview that they've, that they've published on this, on this BBC apps, um, London Jazz, it's part of London Jazz Festival, uh, where they, uh, the BBC interviewer of the time, I don't know who it is, is interviewing Oscar, Oscar Peterson. Oscar Peterson being one of the best, most incredible, incredibly gifted jazz artists of the day. And I just, I was really drawn into this interview with Oscar Peterson. And the, um, the BBC interviewer, he kind of he gets a little bit stuck. He's not quite. There's a bit of a pause. He's not sure what to ask next. But he asks Oscar Peterson, you know, of all the albums that you've done to date, which is your favourite? Which is the one that you are most pleased with? And Oscar Peterson mentions this. It's the Oscar Peterson trio at the Stratford Shakespearean Festival, and he's really, really into it. He's really happy to put his name saying this is his favourite album. So I had a look at it. It's dead, it was dirt cheap to buy in the UK and seven or eight quid, I think it was. Recorded in August the 8th, 1956. It's on the Verve label. I'll try and get out of its cover so you can have a look at it. It's, a, it's not a gatefold. It's, it's, you know, it sounds pretty good. You know, it's 40, 50 years old. It sounds fantastic. I think this is a... a I think this was a 1980 something record. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. Anyway, so yes, so that's another part of the story. So um, yeah, Oscar Peterson says, you know, this is I really I felt really relaxed about this when I made when I performed with the trio. I really enjoyed this, I, and reading the liner notes as well. Because the interviewer also said, well, yeah, you know, John Lewis helped to um, do the uh, sort of produce it or help to, you know, help to engineer the, the album. And, and Oscar's like, yeah, yeah, yeah it was fantastic. Uh, and it's on the line and it's on the notes at the back. Uh, it, it just talks about, uh, you know, we were aided by a very helpful John Lewis of the MJQ who lent the engineer a hand in the control room in the monitoring of the trio. It's a great listen, and the the skill and artistry of Oscar Peterson is something that I've not really appreciated that much until now. He was fantastic, and he practiced 
for hours and hours and hours. He would do a jazz gig with the trio and then he'd have five or six hours of just practice and, and he lived and breathed the piano. <laughs> and it shows in this recording, it's fantastic. So that's the Oscar Peterson trio at the Stratford Shakespearean Festival. Well worth it. Uh, yeah, yeah. And what was in there? I got this from a, somebody off Discogs and they um, sent it to me. And the previous owner of this record has written some wonderful things on the, um, the inner sleeve uh, saying, um, clean sleeve, £1.99, OP at Stratford, 18th of March, 88. Jewel improves the improves the bad recording quite a lot. It's not a great recording. It's it's not a brilliant recording from source. The record is great. It's a nice listen, but it's not anything like a tone poet or what's been put out by acoustic sounds or anything. Um, and then he's put here dated 10 10 92. Liked more this time, but I suspect only because I'm reading OP's biography. <laughs> Where's this guy, this is a, I mean, he's probably long gone now, uh, possibly. Um, but lovely to see that somebody has taken the care to write some notes, you know, a little bit of a critique in, <laughs> have a look at that. If you know who this is, I'd be really, I mean, I'd be completely stoked if someone got into touch and said, yeah, 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 that's me. Um, I don't know what dual means. That must be some kind of piece of equipment, dual listening, but he's actually got a bit, Bit of AB testing there, I think. And uh, he's tested that on the 18th of March, 88, the 6th of October, 92. Anyway, little things like that tickle me. I just, um, you know, it, adds a, it just adds more to the character of the record that I now have and I'm enjoying. Um, I think that's really special. Anyway, let's move on. I digress. <laughs> uh, I dropped in to see my local record shop, Marios. Hussar Records here in Exeter, Devon, and uh, I blind bought a few things, a couple of things, well one thing in particular I'm not happy about, but I'll talk about that, um, but I did pick up this, Ahmed Jamal, Gary Burton in concert, lovely live recording, cost me eight quid, a lovely clean copy, and it's on the King, is it King's, King's Jazz label? Kingdom Records, sorry, Kingdom Records. And we've got, who have we got here? Uh, Peyton Crossley on drums, Sabu Adeloyola, Ade, Adeola on bass, and recorded at Palace of Festivals Theatre, Cannes, France, January 26th, 1981. Sound cutting by Al Brown. It's a lovely record. Very happy to get that. I love good stuff that's recorded really well because it makes you feel like you're a live live performance not that i go to many live performances but it's a lovely lovely listen that ahmed jamal i'm gonna have a little look to see if i can find some more of his stuff because it's um it's just a lovely swings really well so i picked up something else which i was a bit disappointed with actually so i've got a little bit of lou donaldson you know when the, you know when the um tone poets really kicked off and you know mr shingling came out uh, and then you've, you know, you, you've got all those classic Lou Donaldson's. I thought, well, I'll give this a go without hearing it. It's Lou Donaldson's Sassy Soul Strut. And it's a lovely clean copy. Cost me 18 quid. Yeah, it's quite expensive, really. I, I wouldn't usually, you know. But anyway, it's just, it's very, I think it's a, I don't know about the late stuff, the late jazz stuff. I think this is probably the 80s. I think. I oh, know it's, it's early 73, uh, recorded as April 17th, 18th, 1973, uh, New York, New York. Uh, it, I uh, I'm just, I'm not, it's, it's just a blue note. It's an early blue note. And there's a hole punched all the way through there. That means something. And I can't remember what it is. George, help me out. You probably know what it is. It's got a hole punched through the corner. I think that there's, there's something significant about that. But anyway, it's I can't. It's just not great. <laughs> it's just it's just very kind of I don't know. I don't know. I just doesn't doesn't do anything for me. 
Anyway, let's move on. I'll talk about that in a minute, that one. Yeah, so <laughs> I went on a bit of a Pablo jazz label hunt following my previous video. And I talked about how I enjoy, just enjoy the quality of Pablo music, the way it was recorded and focusing on big band stuff predominantly. So I went to my, ro my local record dealer and had a little hunt around. He's got quite a bit of Pablo. I'm not going to get too much of it, but picked up this. Pablo Live, Montreal 77. <laughs> and it's it's really lovely. It's really good. Some really good stuff in here. Count Basie, big band. Sounds great. We've got uh, Wayman Reed, Lynn Bibiano, Sonny Con, Bobby Mitchell on trumpets, Al Gray, Dennis Wilson, Mel Bonzo, Bill Hughes on trombones, Jimmy Forrest, Eric Dixon, Danny Turner, Bobby Platter, Charlie Folks on saxophones, John Duke, bass, Freddie Green on guitar, with Butch Miles on drums. It's nice, it's really good. Again, 1977, love it. In the, sim in the similar vein of that, I picked up Happy Time, Oscar, Oscar Peterson again, with Joe Pass, Ray Brown, Eddie Locke, with Roy Eldridge, with some lovely gentleman, gen gentlemanly jazz vocals on this. It's great. It's a really nice, chilled out evening list in this. 1975 on Pablo, if you can see that. Uh, let's have a little look. Take it out. Yeah, I mean, it's a lovely clean record. Gave it a really good wash. And uh, flat as a pancake. Pretty much. Yeah, it is. But stunning. Really stunning. Really nice. Nice. I also picked up the bosses. Joe Turner, Count Basie, nice cover, really clean copy from 19... Doesn't say, but it's a great, again, lovely dynamics. It just, it's deep, it's great, great sounding. They knew that what they were doing at Pablo, really into Pablo stuff. What year was this? The bosses. Uh, let's have a look. Nineteen seventy-four. So again, really good example. Nice. I then picked up this one. Just two more. Farmers Market. Barbecue. Camp Basie Big Band. Nineteen eighty-two. So a bit later. But a lovely picture there of Count Basie. Um, it's great. <laughs> uh, we've got Freddie Green on guitar, Jim, James Leary on bass, Greg Field on drums, a load of people on trumpets, a load of people on trombones, Kenny Hing, Herrick Dixon on tenor sax, baritone, John Williams, alto saxophones, Don, uh, Danny Turner and Bobby Platter. And it was just, yeah, fabulous. And lastly, <laughs> Bear with me. I'm not going to buy every Pablo I see. Um, for the first time, Count Basie Trio, 1975. And um, we've got Ray Brown on bass, Louis Belson on drums, recorded on May 22nd, 1974. Again, beautiful quality. <laughs> I've gone a bit Pablo mad, but there's some lovely stuff here. One of the things I did like on one of these, I can't remember which one it is now. I think I do know. Is that the the inner sleeve has at the time all the uh, all the recordings that they've done um, on Pablo, which is great. Uh, can't find it. I oh, can't find it now. Oh, it's on that one. You on that one? No. Um, yeah. So on the inner sleeve, they printed all the all the 
including the um, Milk Jackson and uh, all the other stuff. So delighted with it, Pablo. But I think I'm done with Big Band for them just for the minute. <laughs> I picked up a later issue of Led Zeppelin, which is great. Really clean copy. This one wasn't cheap. It's got a stunning, stunning quality gatefold. Really good quality. Yeah, it sounds great. <laughs> I don't have much Led Zeppelin, to be honest, but the early stuff is just great. And this sounds fantastic. So I'm, I'm really pleased to get this. So she, you know, Black Dog is absolutely fantastic. Really, really nice. Yeah, not sure what year this was. 1971, but yeah, really good quality. Great, have a listen to this. Running out of time, but one more thing I wanted to talk about. I couldn't resist this. They brought out a couple of tone poets very recently and I just had to get this. It's absolutely fantastic. Would it would it have met my top 12? Probably would have it probably would have got in the top five, top six. So it's that good. It's picture of Heath, Chet Baker on trumpet, Art Pepper on alto, Phil Erso tenor, Carl Perkins piano, Curtis Camps on bass, Lawrence Marable on drums. This is fab. This is great. <laughs> I highly, highly recommend this. Not a gatefold. Lovely quality cover, recorded in October 1956. Highly, highly recommend this. Slightly large, oversized cover, so I had to, I've done a video for it actually, how to cover these that are very slightly oversized. Um, but yeah, the Pacific Jazz covers are slightly sl bigger for some reason. But if you can get hold of this, have a listen, highly, highly recommend it. It's gorgeous, perfect, 100%. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful listen. So that's it. I'm done, finished, <laughs> finito. I will not be buying anything else now. This is it, Christmas is around the corner and uh, I hope you're all keeping well. Have a good one and I will hopefully see you in the new year. Um, keep your comments coming, really like to hear them and uh, take care of yourselves. Bye, take care.